Hello. Uh, today we're going to be talking about algorithms, specifically how to analyze the big O runtime analysis of divide and conquer algorithms. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what divide and conquer algorithms are, think of a uh, merge sort. Uh, you have a list, you have an array, right? And you're splitting your problem into like subproblems, and then and then you put it all back together. So it follows this sort of recursive stack-like um, progression. Um, and there's a certain way that you find the runtime of these things. And what you do is like you take, you look at your algorithm, you say, okay, I need to break this down into a certain formula that will represent, you know, how many calls I'm making and what I'm doing in each call. Um, and that's called the recurrence relation, all right? Um, so in most uh, introductory, you know, uh, introductory, what is it, programming, in most introductory algorithms classes, uh, what you're going to be doing is taking a recurrence relation and then solving it and then learning later on that there's this um, technique, um, this shortcut for doing it called Master Theorem, right? And that's the title of this video, Master Theorem. Um, but I found that most, you know, textbooks or online uh, resources don't really explain it that well. So today, I'm going to try to give you a more intuitive look. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think it's scary at first, right? When you're trying to turn a divide and conquer algorithm into a recurrence relation. You see all these, you know, variables that you're, you'll see later on. But really, uh, it comes down to three things. Uh, how much are you scaling down the amount of work that you're doing? Are you dividing your problem in half, in thirds, in quarters, in fifths? I don't know. Um, two, how many recursive calls are you making? Uh, per cell, like, are you? Am I calling like three or four, five? Like, again, it has to be like a number. Uh, and then th the third thing is uh, the runtime of whatever's happening in each recursive call, um, and that's important, obviously, because it's just another runtime to consider. Um, so, without further ado, uh, let us look at the uh, recurrence relation of merge sort. So it's t of n equals two times t of n over two plus n, and t of one equals one. Now that bottom thing, the t of one, is a base case, right? It's like after we've uh, finished, you know, merging, well, breaking down our list and then merging it back together, um, all we have to do is just make, like, one little if statement call, which is just O of 1. Uh, so we don't really have to worry about that. Uh, what matters is this, you know, meaty thing with the twos and the plus ends and whatever. Um, and it looks scary, but again, you can just break it down. Um, the two in front of the T just represents the fact that you're, you know, calling two recursive calls. You're calling merge sort twice per uh, recursion, obviously, because you're splitting your problem in half, which is what the N over 2 is telling you. Um, and then... So you're doing that, you're splitting your problem, and then if, you, uh, if you're familiar with merge sort, what happens is that uh, you have all these like uh, broken down uh, lists, and then what you do is you put them back together, and you merge them back, and the merging part is, is O of n, that's why you have this plus n uh, on the side. Um, so solving this is actually not that bad. Uh, what you do is you take, um, you keep expanding it out, right? I'm going to turn the two... I'm going to take this t of n over 2, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to feed it back into the formula, and I'm going to create uh, what that would become. Uh, and when you keep expanding that, you begin to notice patterns, right? You notice that the 2s in front of the t's will keep, you know, multiplying uh, the 2s, you know, inside on the denominator of the, you know, the, um, the argument of t. They're going to keep multiplying as well. And you notice here, um, which is mostly the tricky part of recurrence relations, is understanding what's happening with the series, um, like n plus n over 2, but that n over 2 is times 2, right? So that's just going to become another n. And you'll notice as you keep breaking this down, like you keep getting n plus n plus n. So uh, what we do in the next step is we say, okay, I'm going to break this down k times. Uh, what is my recurrence relation going to look like if I introduce this variable k? Uh, and what you get is evident here, 2 to the k, t of n over 2 to the k plus kn. And I hope that makes sense after, you know, the explanation that I just gave. Uh, and then what you do is you say, okay, what k will make the argument of t 1? Because, you know, that's my base case. And it turns out that n over 2 to the k will become 1 when k is log n. Uh, so then we plug in k as log n. This is kind of genius, isn't it? When I first realized this, like when I first learned this, I was like, wow. Um, but yeah, uh, we get 2 to the log n, t of 1, which is just 1, uh, plus n log n. You'll notice that the 2 to the log n is just n, if you know your log rules, which I hope you do if you're taking an algorithms class. So you have n versus log n log n, which is bigger, n log n. Um, so yeah, when you think about it, all you're really doing at the n step is comparing these two little pieces, this two, these two little green things, 2 to the log n and n log n. Uh, and what master theorem allows you to do is just cut to the chase and say, okay, I'm going to find these two things immediately. I'm going to create a formula that will find these two things for me. And then I'm just going to compare them. Um, so yeah, let's call this first thing A, like the 2 to the log n. That pattern will be called A and then big A. hope this doesn't get confusing. And then uh, n log n will become our B, our big B. Uh, so what master theorem says, if we have a recurrence relation in this form, A times T of n over B plus F of n, is that you know our big A is going to be n to the log base B of A. And big B is going to be f of n times log base B of n. Um, and you can notice where these patterns come from. Uh, the n, of, n to the log base B of A 
um, is really just the same thing as 2 to the log n, because another log rule tells us that you can flip the 2 and the n, so it actually is n to the log base 2 of 2. It's equivalent. Um, and that's just easier to think of for our purposes. Uh, and then the b with the big b with the f of n log base b of n, that's just the, the fact that you have this like you know recurrence, this relation, this recursive tree. Um, and the height of this tree will always be you know log b of n, or will usually be that. Um, so then you could express b in that form. And then what you do is you just compare big A and big B, and you choose whatever's bigger, because that's just what you do in recurrence relation. This is just giving you a shortcut. Um, so obviously there are some conditions to take note of, but they do make sense, and I think not a lot of sources really emphasize that. Like, A has to be greater than or equal to 1, because you can't make a negative recursive call, right? A represents the number of calls you're making. So usually it just should just be some natural number. Um, but, I mean, root 2 is allowed, or, like, irrational numbers or weird things like 3 halves or pi. Um, but in the real world, you're really not going to find that that much in a recurrence relation. I've never seen something like that. Um, and then the B has to be greater than 1, obviously, because, you know, as you, you have to scale down your problem. You can't be scaling it up. That would just, that would just run forever. Um, and another interesting thing is that if big B is smaller than A, then big A by a factor of log N, you cannot use master theorem. So, like, if F of N was 1 over log N is what I'm saying. Um, and the reason that is true, I don't really know why. I haven't had the energy to really prove it. Um, but it's ugly. I don't really know how to solve it with the current relation either. Um, but essentially, it, it ends up making sense. It's like, if I can't, I can't solve this in the recurrence relation, it doesn't fit my pattern, so it's not going to fit my theorem either. Um, so that's master theorem for you. Uh, I hope you have fun evaluating more divide and conquer algorithms. I hope you have fun in your continuing CS career in algorithms and beyond. Thank you.